Hello, band geeks and popular kids. Coming to you from Study Hall in Burbank, California High School. This is the Film vs. Film podcast. I am one half of your hosts, Quinn Boys, and I'm joined as always by my co-host and high school movie aficionado, Leonard Smith Jr. That's right. I am a member of the theater committee, and if you want to maybe get a major role, you have to talk to me. Leonard is such a high school aficionado because he was in high school for six years. Seven. Seven years. Wow, you really took the Van Wilder experience with high school. It was great, man. Yeah. Well, it's not just us, thankfully, today. Uh, We're talking about, as I have made quite clear, two of our favorite high school movies. Two movies we think are the most emblematic of the high school experience, is maybe a better way to say. And to help us parse through these films, she's watched them both. She's going to help us judge which is more fitting. It is Cassie Jerkins. Hey, Cassie. Hi. How's it going, guys? Going well. We're glad to have you. We're excited. Um, Hopefully you are not upset with us with our choices uh, for these movies. If you're going to be upset with anyone, it's probably me. Hopefully you're not upset with one of us. Yeah, we we passed Cassie a note uh, in class and it said, will you be on our podcast? And there were three boxes. Yes, no, maybe. And thankfully you checked yes. And um, we appreciate Mm -hmm. you joining us today. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not mad about these choices. I don't agree with either of them, so oh, no. I'm undecided. So I think uh, I'm coming in really not knowing uh, which one's going to be deemed best. So don't agree with you guys really got to oh, deliver. Man, you know what? I honestly, when we were deliberating on our choices, and Quinn, I made the mistake of, of suggesting tell, to me of suggesting that I was surprised at his choice. So his original choice was super bad. And I also was thinking super bad, but I was like, I'm not going to go there. I'm not choosing super bad. And he chose super bad. And I was like, I'm surprised you didn't choose Mean Girls. And then I and, pivoted. And then he pivoted. And but, I've never seen Mean whoa. Girls, so I could never, I, it could never be my choice. But Cassie just said she's on the fence to begin, which I wasn't expecting. And I am sweating like I was just told I have to run the mile. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would have given it to super bad, but oh, uh, <laughs> it's off the table. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I... For sure, thought I was taking an L going into this, and then I watched both movies yesterday, and I'm feeling good. Oh, get the hell I'm out! I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm fighting. I'm I'm coming in with that fighter's chance. I'm right. going behind, but let's just dis- all right. If you're feeling good, then I'll let you go first. Leonard, tell us about the movie you picked this week. Best <laughs> high school movie. Best high school movie. Um, I was really all over the place with this choice because we could have gone. There could have been so many routes, angles we could have taken. It's a real genre. It's a real genre, and. I, I had a feeling I knew what you were going to do and I was trying to like maybe go to maybe the opposite end of that. But I also felt like the time we're in and the, how I'm feeling right now, I didn't want to force us to watch some like depressing movie like kids or like some other like you <laughs> or know, it's fault a, in our stars. <laughs> yeah, I, I love a hospital movie. Cassie. <laughs> well, my other option was dead. I can't wait for your hospital movie episode, <laughs> guys. Oh, so ready for that. Halloween 2. That's going to be season 27. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was thinking Dead Poet Society, but mm-hmm. we were talking about glow up movies. And I was like, I instantly thought of the new guy. And I was like, oh, wait, that can be my high school movie. Mm-hmm. And mm. uh, you had chosen Mean Girls. And I was like, this is essentially the same movie. It, at least I was thinking that before I watched them. It's about this kid. He's going into sen- senior year of high school. He's just like a in his own universe, like really interesting character and uh <laughs> some bad things happen to him he gets picked on he boy um, does he yes he gets his <laughs> penis broken in front of the entire school and oh wait what <laughs> that woman grabs his the penis. librarian the old librarian thinks he has a weapon in his <laughs> pants and she breaks his dick it's one of the most oh. <laughs> like cassie did you because i have seen this movie before cassie i believe you've never seen it you said it it missed my radar, which is crazy. I'm like a huge Eddie Griffin fan, so I'm like, why did I not see this? <laughs> no Eddie Griffin movie collection uh, is complete without the new guy. <laughs> I also was a very big Eddie Griffin fan. Like uh, Undercover Brother was like probably my favorite movie it's, when I was in middle school. It's one of my favorite I movies. I think we've all bonded over this before. So Leonard, Cassie, and I are all on the same improv team. We are a part of Lotions 11. And um, mm-hmm. obviously, we, we, we overlap in a lot of different ways in our comic sensibilities. And I think on a text 
sometime last year we all talked about having all seen Undercover Brother. <laughs> Which did that come out the same year as this movie? Was two thousand two? Uh, no, no. He did this. It came out. It came out after this movie. Okay. So he probably shot this and then went on to do Undercover. Wait, Brother. Under, Undercover Brother came out after this. Wow. Yeah, like immediately after. I for sure. Maybe the same it was year. Before. Okay. All right. Well, but Eddie Griffin. Yeah. Eddie Griffin. I. I would. I'll see it to you guys. I'm not as big. I don't know that much about Eddie Griffin outside. Like I. He's a, is he a stand-up? Like, how did he get his start? Oh, he's a stand-up he's a stand-up, comedian. yeah. Okay, oh, so I don't know big. that much of his stand-up, but I've seen him in movies usually around this. Very big at the comedy store. Yeah. Um, he mm-hmm. blew up, like, got bigger in the late 80s, like, early 90s. He had his own show called Malcolm and Eddie with, um, uh, who's uh, the, the oldest Huxtable? Malcolm Jamal Warner? Malcolm Jamal Warner. They were both, like, mechanics. Let the record show and, that uh, I just told Leonard uh, the correct Huxtable. <laughs> I did not watch the Cosby show, so I, I hated it. On the right side of history on that one. Um, yes, I was. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry. I threw you off your rhythm, but I can, I'm just going to jump in to say that dick-breaking scene, which is the only way to correctly summarize that, is the most incomprehensibly shot thing I've ever seen. Like, I rewound it because I was like, what happened? Like, I screamed. <laughs> I thought it was – it's probably one of the best jokes because, like, they would never do that now. An old lady would never – you could – couldn't get away with that he was I loved pulling it. her by his dick she was in a wheelchair we should say she's 80 years old they say later and she grabs onto his uh member and him backing away causes her to roll after him because she does not break her kung fu grip and then he tries to turn and yank and his dick breaks in front of the entire and she has a line school. like it's like this is mine or something yeah, so this crazy. is mine now doesn't he say <laughs> yes that's what she he says. says something later he's like they're talking to he's talking with his therapist or something or the, the school therapist and he goes well, you know i'm so, i know what happened he goes what happened that i can pee around corners now like there's there's a lot of good jokes in this movie surprisingly <laughs> there were a lot of good ones and there were also a lot of very yes, bad ones very bad but ones. i know as a teenager i would have found very funny exactly. so i was trying to have that I had that same feeling it. about Mean Girls, but I was like, I know that I would have said this in high school, or anybody would have said this in high school at the time, and I mm-hmm. just can't really be that harsh of a critic. But so he gets prescribed drugs from the school for the Tourette's. Side. It doesn't make any sense. It makes sense. any sense. If he gets, makes, this is a bad joke. It's a very bad joke. <laughs> and they give him a lot of uh, drugs, or, and then he goes and, and makes this great speech. Impersonates a black preacher. <laughs> <laughs> in fact this i think whole... he shoves a black preacher out of frame so that he can do that was gene simmons oh it was that was gene simmons <laughs> and i kind of ruined maybe something i was going to do later but anyways famously um... not black uh... <laughs> mm-hmm. he, at the beginning they show that he like has this basically like black spirit the movie starts with him watching james brown and dancing and he loves mm-hmm. funk music he gives this impassioned speech and then eventually he gets put in jail where he meets eddie griffin and he learns how to be black. <laughs> he gets this whole new cool persona, goes to the new school, and he lives a new life. And uh, he's the new guy. He he gets uh, mm-hmm. he gets like full makeover. They they take his dorky bowl cut and they make it like you know kind of like very spiky, spiky blonde. blonde, spiky hair. He looked yeah. like um very two thousand two. Yeah, he looked this like this movie uh, is carbon dated so many times. It's two thousand two. Is like, it Xander from yeah. uh, Buffy? Oh yeah, ain't. Oh yeah, Not yeah. Not a Buffy guy, but I know exactly. Buffy who he is. Spike. And Angel, Spike, Spike right? Yeah. Spike. That's what it is. Yeah, I am a Buffy guy. And they were like, "He's got that Brad." Pitt. He's like, "He does not look like Brad Pitt." <laughs> yeah. Let's just stop saying that right now. I will say I'm going to come after this movie hard because I, I I saw it a couple times and I remember enjoying it when when I was 11. But um, I think it's bad. <laughs> but I will say DJ Qualls. I I appreciate that DJ Qualls was given a platform to be like a very unlikely movie star you know yes yeah i thought he was great i thought he did he's great i have a lot of problems with this movie he is not among them Mm -mm. okay so Mm -mm. we've talked about my movie let's talk about your movie well it's much the same plot leonard uh i picked the 2004 Lindsay lohan tina fey classic mean girls uh mean girls is about katie played by Lindsay lohan who is just starting high school at the age of 16 she's been homeschooled all her life her parents lived in africa now she's moved to the U.S. She's having a typical high school experience. She uh, starts high school. She kind of doesn't know where she fits amongst all the cliques. She doesn't know all the rules, all the kind of defined high school things that you know if you go through the public school system. And she gets sucked into the orbit of the mean girls, the plastics. Uh, these are the hot, popular, superficial girls that run the school. 
and initially she's kind of she's a cipher no one knows anything about her she's Lindsay lohan she's cute so they they kind of try to bring her along but she's kind of going in to upend the system of the school she's trying to get dirt on the well there's two specific people who yes who influence her to go undercover yeah her two her two mm-hmm. her two janice nerdy friends and... janice and uh uh-oh can't remember <laughs> This is your movie, Queen. <laughs> it's my movie, but you watched it yesterday. <laughs> uh, isn't it like, I'm not even going to, I'm just going to look it up real quick. But she goes undercover. Um, she winds up becoming a mean girl. It's a cautionary tale, mm-hmm. this movie. It is very yes, much yes. like um, Damien. Janice and Damien are her, her nerdy they, friends. They both are kind of oh, like the same. St- isn't that the actor's name? Is Damien. It? I, think, I think it is Damien. Damien played by... Daniel Franze- Franzese. Oh, Daniel. Dan- yes. They yes. both kind of have the Canadian. same central theme of just like S- code switching. Code switching. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, learning valuable lessons, remorse. Selling your soul to become popular. Yes. The, and I think that's good. I, the, your movie came out in 2002. Mean Girls came out in 2004. This is essentially the same era. Um, I was in. I was just about to be in middle school, I think, when New Guy came out. And I was just about to be in high school when Mean Girls came out. I think I was in like eighth grade. So both of these movies were, and I, I almost think it's more part when you see a movie about the high school experience, but you are not yet in high school because you're like, I don't know what this is like. Is this what this is like? You're much mm-hmm. more susceptible to the propaganda that the movies are giving you absolutely yeah i was in high school when both these movies came out and i did not see them in high school (laughs) but in middle school i watched probably all the high schools so my personal favorite high school movies are like from the night what are your what are your in fact i i wanted to kind of go macro for a moment and ask Mm -hmm. what are our like what do we what can we all agree defines a a good or just a typical high school movie but um i think what can help cassie if you want to talk about some of your favorites of the genre yeah um, I'll say two things. One, probably my all-time favorite high school movie that's my favorite is um, 10 Things I Hate About You. I think it's classic, so good. Um, and I think also I have realized about myself, I like when a movie is like based on the adaptation of like an old book or Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking about Romeo like, and Juliet? Yeah, 10 that... Things is like, it's. I actually haven't seen 10 Things, which don't hold that against mm-hmm. me, Cassie, but that's like based on... Taming of the Shrew. It's some Shakespeare thing, right? Yes. Yes. Taming of the Shrew. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to see it. got to. Uh, I feel Quinn, like. Quinn, you just lost points. Well, Leonard should have picked it. <laughs> Leonard didn't pick it, and he has seen it, Cassie. He pulled that it. against him. I have seen it. Um, I feel like with high school movies, obviously, you're just going to have a lot of cliche tropes. Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like yeah. in a high school movie, I want to see a montage. I want to see like either like a fun montage, or it's got to be like some type of sports montage. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. and i just always love the inner workings of the like basically class system of high school yeah 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 totally high school movies almost have to have those cliches like i I, weirdly i know that's a because like high school does have there are popular kids there are jocks there are nerds it's not always as cookie cutter as the movies make it out Mm -hmm. to be but i do think that's like if you just watch a random high school movie and it's just someone going to third period, that doesn't feel like a high school movie. I want to see like the the football game or the the auditorium, mm-hmm. like the gym class. Like I need to see those... the extracurricular activities. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cassie, what do you look for when you're if you're looking? Do you often look for high school movies, or are you like I don't want to relive that period in my life? Um, I know that's weird. Like high school is such a weird time for me because like I switched high schools and. Yeah, it was just a weird time. Um, But I do like, so like I hated my high school experience, but I do like high school movies. But I think it's that classic, like when you watch a high school movie before you go to high school and then you go to high school, you're like, this is nothing like the movies. Uh, Like you kind of think it's going to be this really cool experience and it's not. What year did you switch high school? Um, My sophomore year, I changed high schools. And it was a weird thing where like, I I lived in San Diego and then I left for three years and then I came back. So I saw everybody, all my friends after they went through puberty. Okay, did you recognize it was them? Really weird. I I some I did and some I didn't. That's um, that's very wild because I kind of did the same thing. I mean, I went really? to two high schools. I let I went to both my high schools for two years. So I left after my sophomore year. Mm. Uh, so mm-hmm. I've been the new guy. I also I went to two middle schools and three elementary schools. Uh, wow. 
I left Virginia and moved to North Carolina for two years, and then I came back at, in seventh grade. So it was like kids I had seen in elementary school. Yeah, it was wild. See how they changed. and I went to two elementary yeah. schools too, so that was also kind of wild. Did you guys find? So you're. Sorry. Oh, schools. I was just gonna say, Leonard, you're probably like a master at being the new guy. Yes, then. that it for sure helped. That's why I'm <laughs> such a social butterfly I am today. That's why I get along with everyone because I, that's what I also liked about the high school movies is like that one character or the person who who was able to intermingle between all the cliques. And I felt like mm-hmm. I was that type of person, and I was in high school. I just got along with everybody. I, I wasn't necessarily that was, friends that's with That's how I was. I could, but, yeah, uh, I could get thrown into any clique and I would get along okay. So, yeah, maybe that that's probably the advantage of switching high schools or schools in general. Um, but at the time, it sucked. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> in both of these movies, that was a possibility. They could have gone whatever, w- which way they wanted to go when they got mm-hmm, to the new school. Mm-hmm. Um, they had different circumstances. Obviously, one was just a beautiful girl, so everybody was just like, if we're going to go for... <laughs> Uh, movies since Quinn's going for mine she's from Africa um, Africa's a fucking continent my friend what country <laughs> what country is she from Quinn do you know I don't think it's stated no I think do it's you know just... what country her parents were from we're, we're uh, studying her parents are generic what, I, does she say what they are no they say Africa the entire fucking movie uh huh they and never they say Zimbabwe, what country that would have totally changed the experience for you yes because they do that to Africa all the time. Africa yeah. isn't a fucking yeah. country, my guy. It's a continent. If so, Wait, do they say she's from the country of Africa? They say she's from Africa. They call her Africa girl. Mm-hmm. And they make mm-hmm. the joke like, oh, you're not black. Mm-hmm. And then there's the like, oh, the African girl. And they, the, the one black girl is like, no, I'm from <laughs> yeah. Michigan. If you want to she get- didn't say I was, I'm, from the, I'm from North America. She said I'm from yeah. Michigan. She didn't even say I'm from the <laughs> United States. She said I'm from Michigan. Well, if you want to go uh, problematic for problematic, I'm happy to get down in the mud oh, with I you. Know, I saw you typing up these notes. I know you're coming for me. So I'm, uh, just, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. starting the war. All right. All right. Uh, nice. Yes. Nice. I think that the idea is that she they wanted to remove they wanted to put uh, Katie, Lindsay Lohan's character. They wanted to have her totally removed so she wouldn't just not have any familiarity with the school system. She has no familiarity with like American pop culture and a lot of, you know, there's like a scene yeah. where. Um, you know, the other kind of revelation of this movie is um, Rachel McAdams, who plays uh, the the main mean girl herself, and uh, Regina. Regina, George. Regina George, and she is like playing something on the radio, and she goes, "Do you even know who made this? You know, who does this song?" And Lindsay Lohan's like, "Spice Girls." Like she has no, <laughs> she, she's like a blank slate basically in terms of American pop culture. Uh, could they have been a little bit more nuanced in like just generally Africa for sure? Um. But I think the, I mean it is a recurring joke throughout the entire movie. Yeah, yes, I, I thought that is. joke was funny where they tell Tina Fey like she's go- finding her math. Oh, class, that's a funny joke. And then joke. Tim Meadows no, comes in and he the goes, joke isn't funny. "He goes, we have a new student from Africa." And then <laughs> Tina Fey looks at the one black girl in class and she goes, "Welcome." And then that's when the girl goes, "I'm from Michigan," which is a funny joke. It I don't think joke. that's that problematic. It is a funny um, joke. But yes, no one expects Lindsay, white ass Lindsay mm-hmm. Lohan to be from Africa. Uh, that's kind of mm-hmm. the point. What's so nice about like. I mean, watching it, you're watching both movies, you're watching them from different like viewpoints. Because when you're watching Mean Girls, you're like, you know what the social aspects are of high school and like what to expect, and you're just like, no, 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 don't do this, and no, and like you just have to watch her make her mistakes, and then you see her turn into a terrible person mm-hmm. <laughs> right in front of your eyes. Mm-hmm. They, I, I kind of, um, and I think we're in the sort of free swim portion of our uh, film discussion. We can talk, we can co- switch between new guy and mean girls. And I will absolutely say new girl at some point um, <laughs> because these movies <laughs> are similar in title, but uh, like we, we can talk about both. Uh, they, they both have that moment where the um, nerd kind of becomes uh in, enchanted with the popular life they get accepted by the popular crowd and they 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 leave their nerdy friends behind um i think mean girls makes that more of a reckoning i think with new guy it's like there's that one scene where they're they're in the he and eliza dushku are in the um sam goody or whatever they're looking through cds <laughs> oh yes yes and yes. then r.i.p r.i.p um 
vanilla ice work in there. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Dude. Vanilla ice in this movie. But what? There's so many musician cameos so in this many film. Cameos and that was part was of like, the fun who, of it, for like, sure. Who produced cameos. this? Who produces movies? Yeah, they were someone like, has a lot of musician friends. So, uh, near as I can figure, and I might be shortchanging this guy, but the writer director of New Guy, I'll look up his name, but he was a writer on Something About Mary, which is obviously. Oh. It's more famously remembered because they also directed oh, it. Oh, that makes sense because there's a lot of physical comedy. There's a lot of movie. that kind of comedy. Yeah. Um, Ed Dector. I, Ed Dector is the name of the uh, of the writer director of this movie. What I do love about that Sam Goody scene or whatever is like it. You do feel really fucked up when he's just like, no, I I don't know them, and it's like he clearly knows them. Yeah, it's also <laughs> like they look so hurt. Like I don't think I don't. I know. <laughs> but then they go and just roast him right after, which is why I love. It. He's like, uh, we're we're looking for a, a dizzy. You've lost your balls, <laughs> your dick and balls. <laughs> um, that's a great scene. And the Vanilla Ice, the cameos in that that movie was. I great. think. What what happened was something Very about fun. Mary was a phenomenon in 1998. This is four years later. Ed Dector, who was a writer on Something About Mary, I guess has enough clout to write and direct this movie, which seems like to me the the lewdest parts of Something About Mary without the like better parts of Something About I'm Mary. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be from what I remembered, I was expecting to be like, damn, I'm kind of worried about what I'm about to see, but mm-hmm. nothing was too like over the top, at least for me. The comedy in both these movies are like very different. So, yeah, I think both movies, as we've said, they deal in cliche. But I think Tina Fey, who wrote Mean Girls and is in Mean Girls, is much better at like underscoring the cliche and making fun of it, and also making you see through it. Whereas I think a lot of the characters in New Guy, like um, the Sunny Mabry character, Sunny Mabry, who's in making her second film versus film podcast appearance she plays the flight attendant the blonde flight attendant in snakes on a plane uh she plays the (laughs) like at one point she is referred to when they're looking through the yearbook as the sluttiest looking girl i've ever or the skankiest looking girl i've ever seen like her her yearbook photo is her licking her lips it made that made me scream laugh i thought that was (laughs) so funny But she plays just um she's just really into having sex which god bless her but like that's her character oh, i just don't there's yeah. no more depth there's nothing to that character and i think and there's yeah and there's literally a scene where the main girl is like i'm gonna try on swimsuits yes eliza <laughs> dushku has a minute and a half long scene where she's just trying lingerie and i'll tell you this it's why i chose this film. God bless her. <laughs> no, no, no. like when i was a teenager i loved this movie i watched it all the time she was hot of course but like at least they were cutting away to 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 uh, Dizzy or Gil and like him being all goofy and like cutting like, away to TJ Qualls. He just just, just long enough, enough just to long enough all the not to make it 13 creepy. year old boys watching this movie. Yeah. Not to make it creepy, but it's like it's like lighting a fire and then throwing water on it every five seconds. Um I, I feel like the new guy though, you know from the jump, it's not taking itself seriously at all. No there's the humor in it right away is like we're yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like very little, like, like comedy five-year-old boy wearing an afro on his head like dancing around with a cape like a cape yeah cape. if we're gonna yeah. if we're gonna knock um if we're gonna knock uh <laughs> lindsey lowen's character from being from general africa i think that we, we ought to <laughs> little uh young dj qual's character in a big ass afro singing james brown I'm, and like you know, watch yourself and like grabbing his nuts i know and and, but they were like, that's the thing they were like this kid is different he's a little bit off <laughs> and it's a black man who's telling you this so you can't be too mad at it you know what I, i'm saying I, sure i guess i mean i i'm not mad at it i I'm thought just... eddie griffin was great in this movie yeah I also thought Tim mm-hmm. Meadows was great <laughs> in Mean Girls. Yes. Oh yeah. my god. Mean Girls is like dry, more dry. Tim Meadows, wittier. I feel like he plays a high school yeah. principal on, uh, or maybe he's not a principal, but isn't it that show, that '80s show on ABC, uh, The Goldbergs? Like, I feel like this mm-hmm. crystallized Tim Meadows post SNL persona. Is he's just if he's not a principal, he's always kind of the adult in the room, kind of like okay, here's gonna yeah, like he's just very like straightforward and his yeah. delivery. Is, is great. Like, everything he says is so funny. Oh, he's so funny. He's got his hand yeah. bandaged the whole time, and he's just like, you Carpal know, tunnel. I re- Carpal Tunnel came back. He's got his hand bandaged up like he just lost the finger. I, 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 read a, I read a fun fact about that. He broke his hand right before shooting, and they wrote that joke in. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, because he has it on the whole time, and I'm like, oh, he probably shot this in a week. <laughs> really committing to this carpal tunnel. Trip. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was like, what? I, like, it was funny, but I was like, I don't really get why it's there. But like, I thought. Yeah. Uh, they called it out immediately. <laughs> um, but I would say you said new new guy doesn't new guy. I did it once. Um, new guy doesn't take it, it, itself seriously. I absolutely agree with you. I don't think. Um, Mean Girls takes itself seriously either. I mean, it's a it's a tight. It's an hour and yeah, thirty seven it minutes, itself. and it just goes, goes, goes. Like it, but gets you like in. you said, in the writing and in the comedy, it just has a little bit more depth. It's a little bit more just like it tries. I feel like it tries to present itself as something that could re- truly happen, except for obviously the girls getting hit by the bus repeatedly. I was like, why? Do, I don't want to see this. Oh yeah, that was. I don't want to keep seeing this. Like, stop showing this to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. I mean. Uh-oh. Do you want to go, uh, Cassie? Why don't we? Uh, why don't we let you speak a little bit about like what your experience, if you had seen these movies before or not, like what your experience mm-hmm. watching them now was in, in in the fresh, horrific world of twenty twenty one. Like, what <laughs> yeah. were your thoughts? I mean, yeah, I was sad that New Guy was completely off my radar, but I watched it with my um, my partner Brian, and he was like, oh yeah, I watched this a dozen times growing up. I can see so Brian shout out to Brian. Very- <laughs> shout out to Brian. Yeah. <laughs> so we watched it together, and like there were times where he was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like if I watched it in high school, I would have like thought it was so funny and i think watching it older i'm like uh some of these jokes feel like uh, aren't as funny to me um and then obviously there is like a running homophobic joke the entire time that was like okay yeah this is this is definitely of its time there are a few Um, running homophobic jokes, and there's like sorry i keep going cassie but i'm agreeing (laughs) yeah yeah no there was a few um but i think at the end of the film it's like I mean, like the Braveheart thing, like, I'm like, this is just supposed to be funny. It's not really trying to, yeah, be more like highbrow, where I feel like Mean Girls kind of has more of a commentary. And I was reading that it was like based off a nonfiction book. It is based on a Um, book. I haven't read the book. It's like popular. It's like a self-help. It's a self. Yeah, it's a self-help book for moms who have daughters going through high school. Um, Speaking of the moms, which is in very this movie, interesting. Shout out to Amy Poehler in oh, she Amy Poehler is that's like cool I mom. almost yeah I almost was like I don't need to rewatch Mean Girls. I saw it like a few years ago, and but all I could remember was Amy Poehler's character. And then watching it again, I was like, oh, I'm glad I watched it again because I forgot a lot of this plot. Oh my god, her um, nipple, the dog, the dog chewing, chewing yeah. on a fake boob, and then also just like her like backing <laughs> it up while filming the Christmas dance, like while she's like in the aisle in like. Boo-boo so sweats. funny and then she's like in the background <laughs> of a spring fling photo yeah. <laughs> like, i love that, that yeah. scene where regina george is like full-on grinding on a guy in her room and she just opened <laughs> the door she goes hey guys do you need anything can i make it <laughs> uh that's why i think there's a little bit of i mean tina fey is uh is tina fey she's great she doesn't need any um mm-hmm. inc- she doesn't need us to highlight her accomplishments but obviously i think she's <laughs> one of the funniest snl writers that they've ever had and this movie Absolutely. i think is her best oh 30 rock is great but no. in terms of movies this movie is her best non SNL. like this is what? i've never seen yeah baby mama, but no <laughs> baby mama's so funny <laughs> um um yeah and i mean if you just want more amy poehler <laughs> baby yeah. mama that that's basically what baby mama was they're like okay everybody loves uh the cool mom let's put her in a feature oh, movie. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, like Mean Girls, I walked away being like, oh, they were like commentary, commentating on like very real people. Like, like mm-hmm. I feel like we all are like, I know these people. I know this cool mom. Um, so for me, I felt like it kind of made me enjoy it a little less just because it was like, oh, I this is making me think about real life and like how high school can exactly. be very traumatizing for people. Um, but, but it's got great jokes and it's fun. It's just like, it's kind of like watching Requiem for a Dream. I don't want to go oh back and gosh. watch it again. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I didn't choose kids. But I was like, if he's going to choose this, I'm going to go the opposite way. But I was like, I'm not going to force anybody to watch kids or even dead boy mm-hmm. society. I mean, I don't want to just like linger in the things uh, like, cause yes, new guy. It took me back to being 11 years old, 12 years old, renting this movie on VHS mm-hmm. before I was even in middle school and kind of looking at like what fresh horrors await in high school in a few short years. (laughs) And 
the DJ Qualls character is very affable. You know, it's, he's easy to root for. Mm-hmm. He is not your typical leading man. Um, but, mm-hmm. like, so you're pulling for him. And I just, watching it today, I could not, or, you know, watching it in 2021, I could not get there again. There are just a lot of things for reasons of just, like, juvenile humor. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, Light yeah. fires and just being like, this is problematic. This is problematic. But there are things where it's like they're just putting a little person in a garbage can and rolling them down the hill. Where yeah. Where he goes, yeah, all right, they make some <laughs> off-color jokes. There's nothing that level of like, this isn't funny. This is just meanness masquerading as humor. And I think there are mm-hmm. a lot of instances of that. Yeah, but they, 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 they. <laughs> That's not a typical high school they, experience. But no, do they confront that in the movie though? Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, no, they absolutely they do. They confront the, the that moral and of, the person who does it. The morals are more or less the same too, which is that everyone should accept everyone as they are. But new guy, I feel like that's not earned. I, I feel don't like know. they are. They want you to laugh at these moments where they're picking on these quote unquote <laughs> freaks and geeks, and then they want you to be like, "But aren't we all the same?" And I did not feel that they earned um, that turn. Okay, I did. All right, maybe they didn't earn it, but. Mean they Girls does also it. do it. They say the R word a bunch. I mean, come on. <laughs> they use the the short girl and the girl in the wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? They don't make fun of their disabilities. I guess they don't. <laughs> yeah. They kind of do when she falls off the back of the thing in the wheelchair. They like all are trying to catch her or whatever. I mean, I guess I'll just mm-hmm. say I, I think and people, Cassie can judge for herself. They but do I... use homophobic jokes throughout with the whole like lesbian thing. And then like. But they uh, also have a gay character in Damien. You see, that's what I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there are bad jokes because it's high school, right? That's all the like the 10 worst things I've ever heard people say in my life. And probably the 10 worst <laughs> things i've ever said in my life came between the ages of 14 and 18 when i was in high school because you're just a dumbass and you're it's cool to be uncaring and blah 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 but and so these movies represent that absolutely i I don't think you can depict Mm -hmm. a true high school experience without a little bit of off color or whatever because that's your age i think mean girls does a better job of kind of showing that for what it is whereas new girl i felt this new guy god damn it new guy (laughs) uh zoe deschanel the new girl is in new guy (laughs) Uh, yeah new guy i think wants to have its cake and eat it too by like making doing all the humor that the jocks would like and then being like but we're all together we're all the same and i just didn't buy it Mm, i didn't buy it interesting interesting okay um we can we can maybe start to to walk through. I mean, actually, unless I'm sorry, Cassie, I know you were still going through. But if you had any other thoughts on these movies, we can start to walk through and kind of specifically go through our criteria, see how it, it stacks up. Yeah, I I think we can go through your criteria because uh, I'm I'm on this on the fence. I don't know which one I'm I'm gonna pick. So Leonard, do you want to do uh, what's a you know our, our, our number first? One? Well, you know, we always lead off with uh, pop culture, and uh, I feel like the new guy really doesn't have a shot at this at all. <laughs> It's one hundred percent. Yeah, I was like new guy. Like, I had to look the it up. That we all had to, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll say this: I had never seen this movie before, and I had seen bits and pieces of Mean Girls. Of, of Mean Girls, yes, my, the movie mm-hmm. I was forced to watch by Quinn Boyes. Yeah, um, I really had to hold you down and take your eyelids open. <laughs> no, but you know, I just heard so many years how great Mean Girls is and how it's so funny and blah 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 blah. And honestly. I thought it was funny. I laughed throughout the entire film. But the way that it's been... is overhyped. It's overhyped. It's been held... Mm-hmm. It was held to a higher standard for me going in. And it just wasn't... It wasn't it for me. So you think... You, 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 you would say New Guy is funnier than Mean Girls, do you? For me, 100%. Okay. I'm but, totally uh, but, the other way. But... All the pop culture references, I knew them all when they happened. Like, yeah. she doesn't go here. She doesn't even go here. She doesn't even go here. None for, none for, uh, none for Gretchen Wieners. You go get Coco. Oh, see, I didn't know that one. Exactly. There's stuff that you don't, you know, October like, 3rd. Uh, I had kind of heard that one. Like, Wednesdays we wear pink. Wednesdays we wear pink, yeah. Boo you whore. Fetch. <laughs> fetch. Stop trying to make fetch Stop happen. Stop trying to make fetch happen. But, like, yeah, cool those man. things are cool all... Mom, yeah. yeah, those things are all fucking giants in pop culture i feel like for mm. people around our so age. we can move on then if you're seating it i yes, mean cassie but, do you have any thoughts on oh, okay oh, yeah. sorry no no sorry. no, no, no i'll let cassie there. i'll let cassie say her. yeah the same thing i like new things about the movie i definitely watched it later than when it came out so i came in with huge expectations and was also like it's fine but we have to acknowledge it like skyrocketed tina fey's career everybody 
pretty much did fine after this movie. Lindsay Lohan um, also was like still, I mean, she'd been in Parent Trap and stuff, but I feel like this solidified her as a no longer a kind of a kid. This was like that in-between movie for better or for worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was reading because watching this, I was like, I was basically like, is Lindsay Lohan a mean girl yet? Because she kind of gets crazy and goes mean, you know? So I was like, I wonder if she was like, a villain on set or whatever and i looked looked it up and in an interview she said it was after this movie because she made so much money and like got so famous it had no guidance that's like where she yeah, says she this, terrible this kind of her downfall <laughs> i mean <laughs> also yeah. not just Lindsay lohan um uh obviously rachel mcadams this movie she'd been in stuff she was i think in that rob schneider movie where he's in the body of the hot chick or whatever but this was the movie that put her on the map <laughs> If I was going to have any argument for pop culture, it would be the cameos. The cameos in The New Guy are insane. And and honestly, Very while I was fun. watching, I was like, why isn't this movie more popular? Because they like there's yeah. so many random good cameos in it. And I just felt like every cameo was actually like a good one or a decent one. Like the Tony Hawk, the Tony Hawk is the only one that I would think Tony Hawk is very funny. You'd be like Tony Hawk. Cause the other ones are like David Hasselhoff, Gene Simmons, people that were famous. The in O'Connell the 70s. brothers. Yeah. yeah. Dads would love it. <laughs> well, I'll love it. Uh, yeah. There's Jermaine Dupri, Cool Modi, Henry Rollins. There's so many mm-hmm. uh, good ones, but yeah, I feel like it yeah. has no chance at all. in pop culture. I mean, I also, I don't know what the budgets were on both these films, but they do feel wildly different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I feel like the director was calling his musician friends to make cameos in new guy <laughs> where like mean girls had the backing of Lorne Michaels and SNL and, like it just feels like I'm like, I think they had more money making it, so they probably were able to market it. And yeah, because w- yeah, I feel like I would have watched New Guy if it was on my radar. And we will uh, we will definitely get into uh, a little bit more of the budget considerations and, and box office once we get to stats. But for now, I think we're all three saying pop culture, New Girls. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's lead to how does it hold up. Uh, Leonard, do you want to defend or do you want me to attack? What do you want? You go on the attack, my friend. You're ready. You're prepared. I'll I th- let you do it. I'm not convinced that this movie isn't somehow responsible for the Iraq War, such as the <laughs> <laughs> such as the level of toxicity that I associate with a lot of. It. I mean, p- take your pick: homophobia, transphobia. There's that scene where they're like making. Um, they're making like the, the the new ID for uh for Dizzy when he's in jail, and they just have, you know, uh, uh, it, it's it's all bad. I, I don't, don't even, know I if I would say that it's trans. I mean, obviously it's fucked up. He does make it the is. joke he, like that. He, ain't he right. passes he off the picture later, right. and someone's like, like, "This girl has but, everything." But like as the character, he never like they never hated on the character at I'm not all saying in the movie. Dizzy's they not never said any, or homophobic or whatever. But no but I think one the ever in the movie ever like slights that character in any way. Uh, fair enough. I think you're meant to laugh at the character, which I think is the movie. Yeah, which is fucked it. up. No one, yes, no, yes, no yes, one yes. says for sure. Um, you know, we've talked about like uh, there's a lot of prison bitch jokes. There's a lot of like you know, but you that's it's 2000. Any yeah. movie with prison, anything is gonna. Mm-hmm. So yes, I understand everything you're saying. I don't think it's too crazy for the time and for what it was. Like mm-hmm. it could have been more egregious, is mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's good. I'm down for a like you know politically incorrect time i guess i just think that you ha- it has to be a little bit funnier or almost like then don't try to sell me the motive the moral at the end like we should all love each other for who that we are like something about it just felt and it's it's mm. a personal preference thing but something about it just felt a little bit like i don't think it was i don't think it was successful in in, in kind of doing what it set out to accomplish even like the weird like there's that character who's part of Izzy's uh, Izzy Dizzy's dorky friend group who just says things that sound that come out weird and he goes like okay, was that yes. a gay comment yes. <laughs> like that was, and then the joke at the sure end is bad. that like yes. Zoe Deschanel is into him and they start making out so the whole thing is like he's not gay or something like I didn't know what the kind of payoff to that mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. and I guess that's my says point. the man who chose snakes on a plane. <laughs> that's let's not talk about my previous wins, Leonard. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I just you know. I couldn't get on board now. I but again, that. I don't think they make these movies for people like me today. But I think also it's telling, and this not to go back to pop culture, that this movie has not um, stayed with us. Mean Girls has been uh, memed out the wazoo. I mean, like, I think different generations of high school girls but or boys are is... finding it. I don't think anyone's 
are. I'm still yeah. gonna say that Mean Girls has is pretty problematic and has its problems as well. Sure. With the R word. Sure. The nigga please. The Asian saying nigga please. Like that. What the, that was very <laughs> unnecessary. That joke did not need to be. There's in there. definitely stuff that doesn't mm-hmm. hold up in new uh, in Mean Girl. I won't argue that at all. The whole definitely. Africa shit. Mm-hmm. There's like a lot of shit that doesn't hold up in Mean Girls. But I like was coming at it from another lens where I was just like, all right, I'm accept. It's a high school movie. I'm accepting this. I'll, I, like, I'm not accepting it, but I'm just watching it and not trying to judge mm-hmm, it too harshly. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about these? Uh, either one of these holding up, uh, Cassie? What? How do you feel about yeah, them you... as far as like them holding up, even as like cinematically or at, like? And it could also these... just you could be also you don't have to talk about necessarily the problematic stuff, Cassie. I'm happy to just talk about the shit awful style in the movie, The New Guy. Everything <laughs> everyone wears in The New Guy is awful like unless it's eliza dushku wearing almost nothing well, everyone is wearing the worst possible i literally from said this in mean girls where the fuck did Ka- uh, katie get all the fucking those clothes from she's from fucking africa she like comes with like she doesn't have any clothes and then all of a sudden her wardrobe is fucking amazing well presumably she's been buying them in america Mm-hmm. I just want to know how her parents didn't know she yeah. was just buying all these expensive clothes and I don't know. That's yeah. The plot that, I mean, that's never acknowledged. You know, yeah. There is that scene where they're like, on Tuesdays we were on Wednesday. Oh God, on Wednesdays we wear pink. Another another uh, pop culture thing. But uh, and she's mm-hmm. wearing a big oversized pink polo. She's I think they da- I think they show her being shirt. in the middle a little bit, and then only once she goes full plastic does she become, you know, hot. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, there's something about the new guy that just reminds me of, like, coming out of the 90s comedy movie style. Like, the Braveheart, like, spoof and stuff that I'm like, it, like, I feel like that was, like, a go-to move in, like, 90s comedy movies that you don't see anymore now. Yeah. I feel like comedy movies are trying to be a little more... Creative. Uh, grounded, maybe more UCB style, yeah. you know? Nothing like cooler, by the way, when you need to convince a school <laughs> that you're the cool kid is then painting your face like Mel Gibson hopping on a horse and then taking yes. a big brave heart scene. Yeah. <laughs> That's what all the and cool kids like, are doing. There was some outlandish yeah, shit there's, in the new guy for sure. <laughs> yeah, and there's just leaps to accept it and no logic. But I mean, as a kid, I loved that. I would have thought that was so funny. Um Mean Girls I think is more like a little more grounded, if you will. Um and it's so interesting that they're two years apart. Like the new guy felt like I was watching a movie from the early 2000s where Mean Girls, I'm like, I feel like kids probably would watch this movie today. Yeah, you, you change this. Uh, Leonard's totally right. It doesn't 100% hold up. But if you if you if mm-hmm. instead of using the R word, you would change the word. like, I don't I think mm-hmm. you can you can make tweaks and the movie is exactly the same. And you just take out some of the mm-hmm. things. I think structurally there's stuff in the new guy that you would not. I don't think that movie works today. I think Mean but, Girls does. But which overall, is, is the way Cassie's saying. it's presented mm-hmm. and the writing and even the style, for sure, I I feel like the Mean Girls wins this category as well. Cassie, what do you think? Uh, what was that? Sorry, what I didn't holds quite up hear. better? Oh, um. I mean, I really don't want to watch either of these films again. <laughs> but, what, but but having ha- having watched them, which, but, which you say it's a wash. She's saying it's a wash. I feel like I feel like you have to give it to Mean Girls Thank just because there's so much talent. Like people would go back and watch it just for Rachel McAdams, yeah. you know, like or just for like Amy and Tina, you know. Like I feel like for those reasons, it, it has a little more mark in cinema history. Where New Guy, unless you're an Eddie Griffin fan. <laughs> Which, Which I you am. both are. Which I am. Yeah, so I was like, oh, hell yeah. But I I mean, ask like a 16-year-old today, I don't know okay. if they would know who he was. You know what holds up before we move into our next category is, uh, <laughs> and I feel like he was all over the place in movies as one of the quote-unquote that guys of the era, is uh, Jared or Gerard, I'm not sure how he pronounces that, Jared Mixon, um, who plays the uh, heavyset friend of, um, mm. of Dizzy. He's uh, he's a, he's oh, a black yeah. guy, and and there's that scene where he's uh, lending him his motorcycle so he can show up at the the high school party and appear cool, and he uh, he's like, my dad loves this bike more than he loves me, and then uh, Dizzy's like, no, he doesn't. He goes, yeah, he wrote it in my birthday card, and I was like, why is that <laughs> familiar to me? And then and credit to new guy, it got here first in the next next very next year, old school, which would be uh, if we were doing this podcast on college movies. 
would might mm-hmm. be my pick. Old school with Luke Wilson and and Vince Vaughn. He's in that as one of the pledges, and um, Weensy is his name. And there's that scene where they're pledging him, and he's like, they all get kicked out of school, and he goes. My dad said he'd kill. He's like, I was the first one in my family to go to college. My dad said he'd kill me if I got kicked out. And then he's like, Vince Vaughn's like, your dad's not going to kill you. He goes, he showed me the knife. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like I, this guy was just getting a ton of roles where he was not loved by his parents. Uh, and he was always nerdy. That just made me think of one thing. One thing I did not like about the new guy was the way that Jock Dude cheated the black dude. His, the black oh, that friend. black guy was, a, oh, that was, that was so funny. Classic. One black friend, like there's one black popular friend, but who I gets think they were trying to the like face. make fun of the, the that trope, and they went mm-hmm. maybe a little bit too far with it. Didn't feel but, knowing to me. It felt like they were but, buying um, in. But um, yeah, they might have been buying in. But um, yeah, that was annoying. But he also was the one who was always calling him out. So it was like he kind of had like some did substance. You, did you feel like they were trying to do a lo- almost like a like a kind of a Carlton thing with him? That's what I kind of felt like. Where it's like he was the nerdy black dude, mm. but and like, then literally he like punches like he does like one of those like com- cartoon punches where the fist just like flies up and like hits him in the face and he falls down. And I was like, that's wild. You wouldn't do that today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he gets his in the end, if I remember correctly. I think or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> Leonard was uh, was Gary, the Gary? Oscar winning ask- actor Gary Oldman in Gary either L. of these Oldman? films. Gary Oldman was he in this film? <laughs> he wasn't in my Cassie. Life. Did you see Gary Oldman in either of these movies? I don't think he was. I did not spot him. Um, <laughs> if Gary Oldman was gonna be anyone in the new guy, I feel like he's gonna be the Lyle Lovett character, like uh, mm. Dizzy's dad. Yeah, I could see mm. that. Uh, he also mm. could be Eddie Griffin. Uh, I would love to see Gary Oldman. And I would say, you didn't even mention this for pop culture. I would say the one thing I kind of remembered about the new guy is that like, and it's as much for the sound effect as anything, but the, the look. Every time Eddie yeah. Murphy would do the crazy, Eddie, crazy Eddie, Murphy, eyes. Eddie Griffin would do the crazy eyes look, he would just turn his head and there would be that sound effect. So and funny. And he'd make a big face yeah. with crazy eyes and everyone would be scared. And he teaches it to DJ Qualls. And that's like the funnier, one of the funnier parts of the movie, I guess, is like, you know, because it's about feeling it. Cool is about feeling it. It's about projecting a persona, and so he teaches him that that thing. Mm-hmm. I think they had good. Bits I could see sure. Gary Oldman doing that, you know, and just doing the crazy <laughs> look. But but then you don't have Eddie Griffin, so yeah. Or he could play like the mm-hmm. Henry Rollins character. Yeah, which would be wasting his. Uh, or also, talents, he could have been the but... preacher. <laughs> that would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, New Girl, Gary Oldman doesn't fit at all. At Probably all. worse even than New Girl. Damn it. Again, Mean Girls, Eddie, oh, mean Eddie girls. doesn't fit at all. Oh, God, I'm a. Uh... And I won Gary Oldman. <laughs> no, category. this is a wash. You're not going to take it. Yeah. Nope. You got to you gotta give it to Leonard. <laughs> and now we're going into statistics, which I have already looked at and I know I'm going to lose. <laughs> right. All right. Give, yeah. give it to us then. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, Let's start with Mean Girls. Okay. 7 out of 10 on IMDb. Solid. 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. Don't see why not. Mm. And then 89% uh, on Google users. Um, let's see how much money it made. I'm not seeing And Cassie it. was speaking about the... Um, I, I've got that here, Leonard, just to take it for a minute. Cassie cool, was cool. speaking about like these movies look like they were different budgets. We'll see. Um Mean Girls cost only $17 million, which even in 2004 is a small budget for a wow. movie. Lindsay Whoa. Lohan was not a big star. She yeah. was not commanding big box, you know, big paychecks. And a lot of the SNL people were still on SNL at the time. So it's not like Tina Fey was, I mean, she wrote it, but it's not like Amy Poehler was getting a big salary to be in it. And no. the other stars, Rachel McAdams, as we've talked about, they hadn't really broken yet. This movie broke a lot of people. So yeah, it was Amanda Siegfried's first. Oh, film. Amanda Siegfried. We haven't even mentioned Amanda Siegfried. Yeah. She's hilarious. And <laughs> she's so good. Yeah. She yeah. get her whole fist in her mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so this movie cost $17 million, It made $130 million. That's a smashing success, along Whoa. with the ratings that Leonard just showed. All right, well, let's go ahead and for talk a, about the new guy. For a woman-fronted com- comedy movie, like, that's huge. Like, there's no... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's huge for any movie, Quinn. Well, um, I'm, I'm saying even more so because a lot of movies don't... Don't try to turn this into a gun on me. I'm saying it's a big deal when movies that don't have, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger in them make $130 million. Mm-hmm. Especially with that budget. Um, all right. So on IMDb, the new guy, 2002 film, 5.9 out of 10. Kind of surprised. Kind of surprised it's that high. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes? Give me a guess. Just, I want to. I want to guess from both of you on Rotten Tomatoes for the score. On Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know what I'm excited critics to guess. Critics or audience? <laughs> uh, I believe this is the critics. It has to be. Okay. The I think the default is usually critic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna say 23. percent I'm gonna say 14. <laughs> percent 
And what do you think the audience score is? 60. Audience, I'll give it 52. Ooh, 54% for the audience. Ooh, oh. And the critics gave it a whopping 7%. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> it's so bad. They hated um, it. It cost $13 million. So and about it made the same as thirteen. Girl. Damn it, Mean Girls. Uh oh. <laughs> and uh oh, I was not expecting that. I was expecting Mean Girls to be like fifty million dollar budget, and they had to pay Eddie Griffin, new guy to be like <laughs> six million, calling a lot of favors. Uh yeah, oh. I still think this is success for what the movie is. Okay, it made hedging thirty one point. 31 point. Okay. That's fine. So it wasn't a yeah, flop. That's fine, but yeah, it's not it made enough. Money. I think it's, no, it's, it's not 100 enough. million less than Mean Girls, so we can we can All give right, this cool. to Mean Girls. We want to move on to some games. Whatever. Let's go on to these games. I got some games. <laughs> Cassie, do you want to play a few games with us? Mm-hmm, of course. Where's she mm-hmm. going to go? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I want to see um, this one. Uh, th- th- these games. Mean Girls is one stats. We're not going to be two. But uh, there's a scene in the beginning where uh, Lindsay. Lo- uh, oh, no. I'm sorry. Um, Who's Janice? Janice is going over the different high school groups. How high school, like, and specifically at lunch where the also not very PC. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. But I, do you remember? Do you remember what some of those groups are? I'm just. I, I want yeah. you to see how many you can list. There are one, two. There's over. There's like a dozen. Potential. There's nerdy Asians. Nerdy Asians is cool one. Cool Asians. There's cool Asians. Two. There's the pretty <laughs> black people that are mean. That is that was unfriendly black hotties. Unfri- yes. Yeah, unfriendly. <laughs> yes, unfriendly black hotties was the term. Three. Uh, there's jocks. Um, there was, jocks. and then there was the band members that are sexually active. Sexually active, active band geeks. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, the artists, I think, which is where her original no, friends. No, like the weirdos. Sat, right? She called them like the the freaks. Burnouts. Burnouts. The burnouts. No, there's burnouts. Oh, okay. Those are the, like the potheads. Mm-hmm. And then there was like the oh. freaks, wasn't there? Like, because he has like all the meat on his face when they cut oh, to him. that's in a later scene, but yes. The, the, oh. They, yeah, yes, they talk about the, the, the oh, artsy okay, kids. No, no, I'll give you that one. The I'll give you that artsy one. Artsy kids, yeah. Ah, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've gotten more than I thought you would. I mathletes? Can... The mathletes? Uh, not named in that scene, but yes, obviously there are the mathletes in the movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you want me to go over some of the ones you've missed? You you got enough. I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. It doesn't right. matter. Okay. Mean yeah, Girls has already won. So listed out <laughs> is and uh, freshmen, ROTC guys, JV jocks. I gave you that. You said jocks. Asian nerds and mm. cool Asians. <laughs> Varsity jocks. <laughs> unfriendly black hotties. Girls who eat their feelings. Oh, yeah. Girls who don't eat anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Desperate yep, wannabes. Yep. Burnouts. Sexually active band geeks, the greatest people you'll ever meet, and you're the coolest people you ever meet, which is Janice and Damien, and the plastics. Ah, which you you mm-hmm. didn't say plastics, but it's all understood. You knew the plastics. We all yeah. know the plastics. Uh, yeah, so you got, yeah. you did very well. I think you got about fifty percent right. of those. Cool, cool, and cool. some that weren't on that list. Um, this next game, uh, this would be fun for all of us. We're all interested in comedy. Uh, I wonder if you can name and Cassie, feel free to help. Uh, if you can name how many SNL cast members are in this movie. Um and who were they? We, well, also we have to give a shout out to Horatio Sands, to say, Horatio Sands, who was Horatio in the new, guy. the new guy. So funny! I had to. I did a double take. I was like, "Is that Horatio Sands?" So many good cameos. Yep. Okay, yeah. so there's Tim Meadows. So he's the extra credit. You got you got the extra credit, but now who are the Yay. four in Mean Girls? Tim Meadows, yep. Amy Poehler. I... Oops, sorry. Oh, do you want me to name yeah, the yeah, other two? The other I know two. them. Okay, uh, Tina Fey and Anna Gasteyer. Yep, I thought maybe Anna Gasteyer would uh, would trip up Leonard. I don't know how like deep Leonard's. Did you see? Did you know who that is in the movie? No, That's okay. um, Katie's mom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they were oh, all Anna from Gasteyer. like yes. when yes. I watched I, SNL. I, I I they were part That's of the crazy. cast. Yes. Martha, Martha, yeah. The best Martha Stewart SNLs ever had. Um, oh, she was so good. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. Martha Stewart's Topless Christmas. Um, and the sweaty balls. <laughs> she, she the sweaty balls. Yeah. Sh- yeah. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Molly Shannon wasn't in this movie. I don't know, right? Um, Maybe she was not was making something else at the time because yeah. she was making a lot of stuff at that time. Yeah, this was like a, a a great, you know. I think they had all well, no, Tina and Amy were still in the cast at that time, but Tim Meadows and and Anna Gasteyer had moved on by two thousand. Did y'all ever watch the movie yeah. uh, The Ladies Man? Uh, I have seen Hell yeah. some of it on Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so also ridiculous. like that movie is just so like, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, best of Tim Meadows, like the ladies' man sketches. I'm oh, sure they put the best it. of the best on there, Loved but it. that was such a fun runner in for One SNL. Of my sketches. 
Uh, All right. <laughs> this is this is less a game. This is like an SAT prep question. Oh, we still got more. Yeah, just one more. God, I just okay. Okay. just one more thing. Okay. Um, this is an SAT prep question. Since we're talking high school movies, the SAT is obviously a big part of high school, a big part of your junior year. Uh, so I just oh, want yeah. to test your knowledge. Um, what do these four things have in common? Sweatpants that say "juicy" on the butt. Anthrax scares. The antics of Bam Margera. And the new guy. I think I know. You want to go for it, Cassie? The year 2002? Things that were better left in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. You're, yeah, the early 2000s was just a bad time. I've always felt this. Even, I, was, I said this when I was watching the movies last night. Like, was one of the worst times for for arts and entertainment like ever it, yeah mm-hmm. it's weird like the 80s i used to feel that way about not having grown up in the 80s but like everything mm-hmm. you would see that was 80s influence was kind of like gaudy and bad I, I, maybe gaudy's not even yeah. the word it just it didn't look cool and now i feel like obviously that was when i was that was probably i was thinking that way in 2002 now in 2021 i look back on the early 2000s as like the music is like new metal like the new guy it's all has just like so poppy and just like mainstream yeah, like did, did they not use like a corn or like a a, a limb biscuit song at one point like there was like bad music in new probably Game. yeah it was yeah all right so we've gotten through stats we know who won stats i <laughs> so didn't even i honestly didn't care three, about three any, one i don't care about i didn't care about any of the categories before this because i knew i won the fifth category which is which is the mm. better high school movie and okay. i'm just gonna mm. make, make your case safe. yeah please this is the better high school movie, is the prompt. Which movie would you have enjoyed more in high school? Which movie would you have had more fun with in high school? The new guy, yes, it has his problems, but in high school, you would have loved it. If you, I feel like even as a guy or a girl, as a, as a man who was fond of women... At a te- as a teenage age, I loved this movie. It, it, it had that. It had physical comedy. The physical comedy in The New Guy, which is just simple humor, which is what high schoolers and kids like to see. The marshmallow in the eye. I don't. I, there is a so time random. in my life where I <laughs> wa- was watching this movie and I literally rewound it and watched that over and over again. <laughs> Like at least also, you never see the dad again. <laughs> he loses his eye, and you never see him I again in the movie. I to show back up with an eye patch. You're right. Why did he never? Yeah, be like never my boy. <laughs> when the black dude hits his head on the on the fucking bleachers, <laughs> he's going to walk mm. out, and he hits his head on the bleachers. The whole like, it was just the physical comedy. In this was great. The dick being broken, and then. <laughs> For it to be a high school movie, there has to be some sports involved, some extracurricular activity. You had the sports, you had the nerds, you had music, you had jocks, you had sex. And if you won in this movie, you had sex. That's high school. Winning is having sex. And that's what this movie was. It might not have been, it might have not have held up the best. It might have not been the most PC, but that's pretty much high school. And uh, I thought it was funny. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty good choice. Thank you, Leonard. I will say that one part of the movie where I was like, okay, I'm feeling into this movie is that uh, that big montage. Once- I was just about to say, I forgot. Yeah. There's no montages in Mean Girls. And if it's a high school movie, mm. there has to be a fucking montage. And there's like mm. at least three montages in The New Guy. Just going to say that. And also earlier in the episode, you said a high school, when we were talking about high school movies and like, what does that mean? Yeah. You said there has to be like some sports. There's some, there's none of that in The Mean Girls. Um, it's literally just about clicks and about this one click and and i'm just gonna stop there okay uh yeah i mean all valid points that you raise leonard i i i just think this is a movie i you know what i'll say this this movie came out in 2002 i was in sixth grade the new guy the new guy and i loved it <laughs> okay or, or 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 moreover i rented it a couple times and i watched it and i know i enjoyed it. it i don't think i was saying even then it was like my favorite movie right okay then i a few years later and, and then new girls came out also before i was in high mean school. girls god damn it <laughs> mean girls came out also before i was in high school um that when i was in high school because your whole argument here is when you're in high school you love this stuff no i did not I, I, I would not have liked this movie in high school. I would have liked the new guy when I watched it when I was like 
a preteen. And I thought that's what high school was. And I was like, this is fun. There's girls dancing and there's all the, oh, they, you know. And by the time I actually made it to high school, my, I, I don't think that this like was my type of humor. I think super bad, which is, I think, closer to Mean Girls. I, I like movies that are about high school that are actually funny. And they were actually felt a little bit more like the high school experience, which is what Mean Girls does. Listen, it's heightened, obviously. And I, uh, as uh, you know, a, a kid trying to find my way in high school, could not relate to Lindsay Lohan or the plastics or whatever. And I don't know that there was a one-for-one one Regina George in my high school. But yes, I knew that kind of type. Like They're all identifiable, uh, identifiable types kind of blown up to be a little bit larger than life, but still recognizable. And it was more of the typical high school experience. I think Tina Fey writing from, I think, you know, she was probably in her thirties when she wrote this movie, but like her sense of humor, she was much more believable and did a much better job capturing kind of the high school experience. A lot of the jokes, a lot of the mean things people say, uh, what's that scene? Like, for example, just one example of a not PC thing that I think is much, there's that scene where they're in the bathroom and uh, in the beginning of the movie, and they're trying to pitch the idea to uh, Katie about going undercover. All right, and uh, Damien is in the girl's room, and a girl comes out, and she goes, are you even supposed to be in here? And then Damien goes, Danny DeVito, I love all your work. And then he, like, chases her out of there. That's mean, right? That's, like, not... But that is what I rec- recognize in high school. I don't remember people dressing up with the, you know, the blue face paint and doing all the oh, things. Oh, that happened <laughs> in my high school. And people it doesn't were... mean that it doesn't make it a high school movie. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, to me, like, if I was to watch a movie, like... The, the new guy is like a weird like he tr- he switches high school which you guys both did and i understand the whole thing about like assimilating and fitting in or maybe even redefining yourself and being someone different than you were in a different school that is very high school but the movie is not telling you anything it's not like it's just the kind of a dumb pointless comedy i think mean girls is similarly doesn't have like big grand things to say but i think it's much funnier and much Leonard is checking his time. I'm not filibustering. I think I've I think I I think I've said all I need to say. It's the superior high school movie. You're because... right. The, the writing is superior. The jokes are more adult. It's more. And I, I think it like, captures. I think high school better than new guy. But I think it's more for I, an adult crowd. And like you said, the other one's more. I for don't like, think I'm it's more for an adult crowd. Everybody loved crowd. it. My age. we'll let Cassie talk. I think adults can enjoy it too. Um, I mean, you guys are not going to like this answer, but I think you're both right, and then that. That's what's making this so hard for me to make this decision is like, yeah, artistically, Mean Girls by Landslide. (laughs) But while I wasn't seeing the new guy in high school, I was watching Undercover Brother, which I would say that humor is very similar. (laughs) Uh, And it was just like of the times of like, you just laughed at something to laugh at something, not because it was a good movie. But... I had a feeling this was going to happen. So I came up with a quiz on my own oh, God. that whoever wins, I will give the point oh. to. Does that seem fair? I mean, New Girl is... Fuck. Mean, Girls, <laughs> mean Girls is leading in criteria this, three to one against Leonard, but now apparently it's just whatever. Yes, I, I, let's, let's do the quiz, but I'm going to be... I should not be this okay. close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, as I said in the beginning of the podcast... My favorite high school movies were the ones based on old books. So I made a quiz, and it's multiple choice. And well, <laughs> Leonard is the nervous. <laughs> I know Leonard's I'm nervous, so nervous, but let's let's see let's see how this goes. Okay, play with the movie now. Clueless is based off of Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, or Emma. 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 I said it okay, first. Okay, you both got that. But Leonard said it first, oh. so I'm giving the point to Leonard. Well, we didn't say what the... what the. Come on. We're, we're not done. We'll just keep going. We'll see what happens. Okay, okay. She's the man. As you like it. Twelfth night. The Merry Wives As, you, as like you like it. Both wrong. It was Twelfth Night. Oh. oh. I haven't seen She's the Man. <laughs> I actually haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um okay last one easy a the scarlet, scarlet letter. letter what i said it first okay <laughs> <laughs> all right i can't break this tie then <laughs> all right in your heart of hearts and you had one choice if you if you were recommending a movie to a high schooler cassie who which movie would you recommend and it, it, and i'm, See, not, saying, I'm like, not saying i'm not saying high is asking you what the give or, me a movie to appreciate high school like okay what what do you think Lennon? 
What's a fairer way to do this? If you were in high school. Because if Cassie's gridlocked, then I win. Because Mean Girls has yeah, won more of the know, previous. No. If you're in high school, which movie would you choose to watch? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it's hard because, like, I think as a high schooler, I would say the new guy. But also, that's a high schooler in 2002. Exactly. I think kids today would watch, definitely would watch the new guy and not like Okay. <laughs> All right, you know, and also we're uh, not picking the best high school movie of 2002. Leonard just, just picked a high school movie from right. 2002. Right. So if you're saying <laughs> so, it doesn't, Cassie, objectively, which one of these was the better high school movie to you? You're just rephrasing if, the same question. If we're if we're going off the criteria of what movie would high school Cassie like more? No, not even high school Cassie. It's right new now, new guy. Right now, Cassie today, okay. I would have to give it to Mean Girls as the better high school movie. Hmm. Just because it holds well, up. Sounds like a loss. I think I think this is no. razor thin for Cassie, and I think I won the previous prompts, and I think I'm down one match, and I think we all can agree. I don't want Cassie to get internet hate for picking new guy over Mean Girls, so I'm happy to let her stay gridlocked, and we can agree Mean Girls is the superior high school movie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Aw, let it so bad. I honestly didn't think it was going to be this Neither close. Neither did I. I am sorry. <laughs> This, I am this sweating Quinn, like the school nurse was, just told me I have scoliosis. This was Quinn before the podcast started. I wouldn't even talk to Len. I didn't come in. I didn't make eye contact. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm going to beat you so bad. I mean, I'm going <laughs> to. And then Cassie's like, I'm torn. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Wow. That was fun. I had a good time. That was a ton of fun. Cassie, uh, thank you. Cassie, okay, thank you for, uh, Cassie uh, what, where, where can we find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Cassie Jerkins. I'm still holding out hope for Lotion Eleven's finale improv show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when and where that'll be, I don't know. Uh, but you know, we are always performing Tuesdays on with We Improv, and that's super fun. Yep. Um, and I'm producing Office Ladies, so give that a listen. Congrats, Cassie. Congrats. That's a new new job for Cassie, and uh, mm-hmm, what a terrific mm-hmm. podcast. She Made came, better by Cassie. She came down from the clouds <laughs> to so. have lunch with the peons. <laughs> 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 she did say that Jenna Fisher was going to join, and she hasn't yet. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you guys booked Jenna Fisher, and I showed up. <laughs> You've been so nice this whole time. <laughs> I had a lot of questions about what it was like working with John Krasinski that I had to scrap. Um, <laughs> seriously, thank you so much, Cassie, for joining. Um, thank you for helping mediate this uh, uh, heated <laughs> heated and frustratingly close win for me girls <laughs> and for me, even though I could never remember the name. And um, Leonard, do you want to tell – so we, we've got a, a similar-ish prompt next week, although I don't think we chose high school movies. We'll, we'll mm. reveal. But what's what are we going to talk about next week? Uh, next week, we are going to be talking about – a glow up or makeover movies yeah which new guy Ooh. would have fit for that yeah. movie as well interestingly which but, um, sparked my idea because i was like let me choose a movie that i feel like was true to me and i know i'm gonna lose to mean girls and it actually <laughs> i was close um, i love that you also gave me mean girls so had that worked and cassie picked new guy i would have lost on a pick that you <laughs> suggested for me and i foolishly took but anyway it's all good um we're gonna have another lotions 11 member yes uh, Rob on, on the show. I'm very excited. And, and uh, uh, I think it's gonna be Rob a good is, time. I think, the authority on Glow Up Movie. I, mean, yes. I look forward to talking <laughs> about that with him. I think he'll have a lot of good takes. Um, but thank you again, Cassie. Thank you for mm-hmm. reliving your high school years with us. And uh, until then, we will see you at the auditorium where they are playing... Um, <laughs> What's that Morgan Freeman movie where he... Lean on me? They were playing Lean on me. <laughs> the, <laughs> the makeshift cinema with the... Uh, with the, the big screen pulled down in the auditorium and everyone's sitting on the, the hardwood floor. I'll be under the bleachers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.